Welcome to this video on cross-sectional research designs. My name is Dr. Manyara. Please check our other video on research designs in order for you to understand the general overview of other research designs. At the end of this video, you are expected to define cross-sectional research designs and be clear where this design is used. You should also know the advantages and disadvantages of using this design and to make and interpret various calculations that emanate from this research design. As we move on, remember that research design is a specific plan, a protocol, a roadmap for conducting a study which allows you as the investigator to get to your intended study findings. Research designs as described in the lecture on the general overview of research designs are grouped into descriptive and analytic studies. Cross-sectional study design can be both descriptive and analytic. It's also called a prevalent study. It is described as a snapshot because outcome and exposure are determined simultaneously and is designed to report what is happening at that specific point in time. It is worth noting that an exposure is a characteristic being investigated and you may find that it has been given other names like independent factor, predictor or risk factor. An outcome is the expected results and has been given various names like the dependent factor. In cross-sectional studies, the exposure and outcome are measured at the same time. One does not need to follow up the study subjects or, and therefore these studies can, are not costly. So they are very easy to do. Students can actually do these studies. Because exposure and outcome are measured at the same time, it's not possible to conclude that uh, such an exposure is the cause of an outcome. An example here is measuring the number of smokers who also have lung cancer. In this case, it may be difficult to ascertain if smoking really contributed to the cancer or not. The number of people with the disease is referred to as prevalent cases. That is a proportion of people with the disease or the outcome at that specific point in time. This is an example of a cross-sectional study and is one among the studies that led to a policy change that supported the reasoning that male circumcision decreases the prevalence of HIV transmission. In this study, as you can see, a total of 1217 men participated in this study, with 398 of them having had circumcision. The results showed that those who had no circumcision were 1.5 times more likely to have HIV. Advantages of cross-sectional studies include the fact that they are easy to do and less expensive as no follow-up of study subjects need to be done. If you want to estimate the prevalence of outcome of interest, then this is the appropriate design because the sample is usually taken from the whole population. This study can access many outcomes. An example here is like looking at the risk of smoking and developing several outcomes like lung cancer, chronic bronchitis, stomach cancer, and others. You, you can also look at several risk factors, for example, alcohol taking, smoking, and diet in the development of one outcome like stomach cancer. Therefore, this study is useful as a public health planning, understanding disease, etiology, and the generation of hypotheses. Since one does not need to follow up participants, there is no loss to follow up, as happens in other studies like the longitudinal studies. One of the disadvantages is that it is difficult to know if certain risk factors may have caused the disease or not. The study can only correlate the risk factors to the outcome. Generalization is limited by the sample population and the population definition, meaning that if this study was done in the over 50 year olds in western part of the country, you may not be able to apply to the people in eastern part because there are many other confounders like diets and, and environmental pollution. If you're looking for rare outcomes or exposures like lung cancer in smokers, you may have to get a very large sample of smokers. This type of study can only give you the prevalent cases and not the new cases, which is usually called the incident cases. 
as already said, gay study is a prevalence study and gives prevalence or the proportion of people who have the disease or outcome of study at that particular time. To calculate the prevalence, you need to tabulate and get the total number of people who have the disease and divide this by the total population at risk. If, for example, you found 12 people with lung cancer among a thousand smokers, then your prevalence will be 12 people divided by a thousand smokers times 100, which will be 1.2%. Okay. In summary, therefore, cross-sectional studies are prevalence studies. They are also observational studies, and both the outcome and exposure are taken at the same time, just like a snapshot. They are easy and inexpensive to conduct. However, they can only correlate the risk factors to the outcome, but they cannot establish causal relationship between the exposure and the outcome. So thank you for watching. This is Dr. Manyara. And if you have not already checked our other video on research designs, please do so so that you can understand the general overview of research designs. Until then, goodbye.